Uh, welcome back, everyone. The last day on Saturday morning in uh, Germany. So, uh, so we continue with condo effect using holo. Yes. Thank you yes, so much. Thank please. you very much. Yeah, thanks. So thanks again for the invitation. And it's uh, really nice uh, to uh, talk to you and have a lively discussion. I really enjoyed that. Uh, okay, let me just recapitulate a little bit the, the main features. Um, so, um, okay, so yesterday I explained to you that um, the holographic condo model works in the sense that uh, it's really a holographic superconductor, so there is a condensate forming. So we generate an RG flow with this double trace deformation and the infrared behavior is characterized um, by, by this condensate that forms. And uh, so let me recapitulate that this really works only because we are in the large end limit, because otherwise there is no such phase transition. Okay, so we are really in the strict large end limit. And, and the essential ingredient is that, um, um, the essential ingredient is that, that we write the, the spin operator with these uh, slave fermions. Okay, so together again with this constraint. And um, then uh, we can use the fields identity to write our defect interaction in this way. And because it's large n, there's many subleading terms that actually drop out. Um, so, and then we, we end up with this double trace operator here. Okay, so, and it's important that um, this operator is a singlet of this SUN symmetry, which is our spin symmetry. Um, okay. I, you know, the model is very similar to the condom model, but of course, a few things are a bit different. For instance, this SUN group is, is of course, a gauge group, whereas in, in, in condensed matter physics, really, we just uh, look at uh, a global spin group. Okay, so for the, this is, for instance, a difference. And, um, um, okay, so, so the important fact is that this uh, triggering, this flow can be realized holographically by this double trace prescription of Witten and uh, other authors from 2001. And, um, and uh, then we, of course, a holographic superconductor is a well-defined concept. Okay, so we also note that the dimension of this operator is a half. And uh, um, so this is because in two dimensions, these fields are dimension, a half fermion in one plus one dimension is a half, but a fermion in zero plus one dimensions is dimension zero. So in this operator, we have a half times zero uh, plus zero. So the dimension is a half here. Um, okay, so, and then, uh, okay. So as I explained last time, the condo effect corresponds to the condensation of this operator, which then spontaneously breaks this additional U1 symmetry that we have introduced by uh, decomposing the spin operator in terms of these chi's. And I also showed to you that really we get a, a mean field transition. So and then above the condo temperature, um, this condensate is zero, but below it's non-zero, but we really have this nice square root behavior that one expects of a mean field transition. Okay, um, so now I want to show you a little more details um, of how um, the holographic model works. I mean, I, I explained the concept last time, but there were not so many equations, so maybe I should uh, put a little more, but let me just recapitulate what was our motivation. So on one hand side, we, we have a gravity dual for a well understood RG flow, um, which teaches us a lot about um, holography. And um, as I already mentioned, of course, um, I mean, there, there's many similarities, but there's, we should be aware that also many differences. For instance, so the spin group is gauged. The large end of is a, really this matrix large end limit that we know from ADS-CFT, so, uh, which is a bit different than the large end limit in condensed matter physics. And also the electrons are strongly coupled, but this is more an interesting feature because this is something which is not so easy to study um, in, in field theory techniques. Okay. Um, I showed you uh, as an extension last time was this quench in the time dependence. So which shows this characteristic features of, um, of time dependence in holography. So there's these quasi normal modes that determine the behavior. And uh, also um, um, there's this very fast um, um, change to the, to the new ground state. 
And today I, I'd like to talk, talk a little bit about the entanglement entropy uh, in the system. And so what is very nice here is that we can really map um, to, um, to, to, to um, behavior that was found in field theory beforehand. So there are some results of Affleck and collaborators who calculated. So if you have just once this impurity spin, then uh, and this entanglement entropy really becomes the so-called impurity entropy. And uh, um, so uh, this was calculated in the large n limit uh, in 2007 or so. And it's very nice because with our gravity methods, we can reproduce that result. So um, th this is another very nice feature here of this model. Um, okay, so you now given all these differences, still what I would like to claim that uh, this gravity model has quite a lot of features um, that reproduce uh, features of the condo model, but also it has some interesting new properties which could be useful for, for new applications. Okay, and last time I also talked quite a bit about the correlation functions and these phasal, phasal resonances, which I think is a very nice feature. And, and this also exhibits this re, um, similarity to, to the SYK model. And uh, of course, you know, this model has been studied quite less than SYK. So, you know, one could also conceivably do all these things that people did for SYK, like out of time order correlators and so on for, for this model. Um, okay. Um, so I, I let me say a little more about the string theory construction that um, I uh, presented to you last time. Uh, here, this is just one page to um, say, okay, I'm not going to through, go through all these examples, but uh, so, so defects in supersymmetric theories have been, and using brains have been studied by, by uh, very many people, um, including Leo actually. <laughs> And um, um, so, so I mean, our model was quite a lot inspired by all of these. Um, um, so, but the new thing is that we can really uh, display this RG flow. Okay, um, so what is new in our model compared to what all these other people <laughs> did before? Um, so we have a model for the entire RG flow, not just as a supersymmetric fixed point, uh, we implement this double trace deformation. And uh, so the condo temperature again arises because uh, the coupling diverges again. So we talked a lot about this yesterday. Um, so we have a picture of this impurity screening. And as I'm going to show uh, also, um, we have a picture of this. You know, remember uh, on Thursday, Friday, on Thursday, I told you about this phase shift. Okay, so the, the boundary condition changes and uh, becomes a, a phase shift. Um, and so, so the interaction can be traded in the CFT description, the, the interaction can be traded for a phase shift. And, and, and this we can also see in the gravity model, although it's not exactly this phase shift by pi half. Okay. And, um, and then as I also mentioned, <clears throat> I mean, so in the experimental realization in, of the condom model for the Fermi liquid case, so for the free electrons, the hallmark of this condo effect is this um, logarithmic growth with the temperature of the resistivity at low temperatures. Uh, but that's not seen here, but rather here we see a power law. And, and that's actually due to the fact that um, um, the, the electrons are strongly coupled even before we switch on this impurity. Sorry, this phase shift uh, is kind of related to Berry phase, like this new study. Uh, yes, I, I, okay, I, I, will, uh, um, I, I will give you more details right now, and the, the answer is yes, I mean, of course, um, what I told you on Thursday was just this very simple boundary condition that changes, but indeed, uh, there, there's a very phase, and um, uh, so the answer is yes, and I will show it to you in no. two or three <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so let me just recapitulate what we did on the string theory side. I mean, okay, so this model is uh, far too, too complicated to be solved, but at least it gave us the inspiration and also the possibility to identify all the fields that we need on the field theory side. So we need these slay fermions, we need the electrons, and we need the scalar, um, which condenses, which is dual to this uh, gauge invariant operator O. And uh, 
Um, so, um, so, so this that's the main purpose of this top-down construction, although to really solve um, the string theory uh, equations of motion for this model is too complicated and. In particular, there's also this tachyon potential, which is, um, I mean, which would we would need to calculate, and uh, that's um, a bit hard to do. So that's why we resorted to just picking the simple potential, with, uh, which is at the the mass term at the Friedman bound. Right, 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 okay, but so um, let me recapitulate that in this model, the geometry, so the ADS five times is five geometry, is still set by. Uh, by NC D3 brains and NC is large again. And um, so, so this really uh, provides a background. And, and so the entire physics that you know, we are studying in this quantum model is just in this probe sector. So really it's suppressed by one over N. Okay, so because these uh, flavor brains that I introduced yesterday, uh, their physics is suppressed by one over N. So, so everything happens really in this one over N sector, which is also slight problem of this model. And so um, uh, let me then mention again this uh, other model that uh, I constructed with uh, um, Christian Norte and Charles Mimby Thompson in 2020, uh, which is based on the D1, D5 system with D3 brain probes. And there what's different is that uh, everything is the, at the correct order in N. Okay, so then also, so then the D1, D5, Brain system already gives us a one plus one dimensional conformal field theory. But in this earlier model, um, so the, there's really still a three plus one dimensional background. And, and so the probe physics is really the, the condo physics is just in the background of this um, standard ADS CFT correspondence. And, and that's why, um, okay, you know, it's not so easy to really solve this model because there's this one over N suppression. Okay, but nevertheless, we, we can uh, use this to, to uh, write down exactly what our, our uh, field theory action is. Okay, so, so we put N7, uh, so a small number of D7 brains. And so these are the internal directions and here they're in the one plus, uh, so in, in the time and one space direction. And so just the D3 and D7 together, this will still be a supersymmetric scenario. And similarly, just the D3 and D5 would also be a supersymmetric scenario. And, and this breaking of the supersymmetry, which also then leads to the condensation, really comes from putting both the D7 and the D5 at the same time. And, and that, that breaks supersymmetry. Um, so, so for the experts, this you can see from the number of these ND directions. Okay, so um, and you have to have either four or uh, eight directions where there's a cross in one direction and not in the other to have something supersymmetric. And so that clearly works for this pair and it also works for that pair. But if you put both of them, then the supersymmetry is broken. Okay, and this D5 brains, they, they really in, in the real world directions only expand in time. And for that reason, so this, this will give us these defect fields. Okay, so, um, let me give you a little more details about this. So um, the, the various combination of pairs of these brains, they have already been studied a lot by other people um, some time ago. Um, for instance, this defect theory where we just put a small number of these seven brains in these directions. And um, so the nice thing that as these authors found, um, um, this gives us precisely the chiral fermions that we need for this condo model where we have this analytic continuation of the radial direction. And uh, so, so um, we have N7 um, uh, probe brains and which, which gives then the, the number of flavors of these chiral fermions. Okay. So, and the strings between the D3 and D7 uh, uh, precisely correspond to these current fermions, which are in the fundamental representation of the gauge group, and that's that's very similar to the the, the quarks that, that is obtained if two of these crosses are moved to to these directions, um, as is studied in uh, QCD applications of of ADS CFT. Okay, and already in these papers, it was found that uh, the, the the field theory action. Uh, is of, of this form here, where this A minus is a um, um, reduction of the gauge field of 
this theory, the NX24 theory uh, to the subspace. Okay. And, but it's, uh, so really we get these chiral fermions that we need already from this construction. Okay, and then on the other hand, um, this system was also studied by many authors in, in particular in those papers. And uh, so, so this is again a supersymmetric scenario. So if we have a D5 brain, uh, which only extends along the time direction and um, that gives rise to zero plus one dimensional fermions uh, chi. And so th these we can take uh, to, be our, um, to be our defect. Um, slave fermions, which we get from the decomposition of the spin operator. And then again, we have to impose this condition on the charge density to, to make sure we get the same amount of degrees of freedom as in the spin case. So this by itself, again, is just a, a super symmetric uh, situation. So there's no RG flow. Okay. And, and so the, 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 the breaking of the supersymmetry comes when, when the D5 and D7 brain probes are put at the same time. And uh, then the, the strings between D5 and D7, they precisely give us um, a tachyonic scalar field and whose quantum numbers can be shown to be um, precisely such that they are dual to this operator, which we would like to condense in our model, okay. Um, so, so this is the, the ingredient which really generates this RG flow then in the condensation. So, and as I said, from the string model, I mean, we would need to calculate the tachyon potential here, but this is not so easy to do. Um, so um, for those of you who are familiar or interested in string theory, so then uh, actually there's some kind of dissolution effect where these D5 brains just dissolve into the D7 and become magnetic flux. So this is a kind of process which is very common in string theory. And um, um, so, so if you put different types of brains, then the, the lower dimensional ones dissolve into the other ones and become magnetic flux. And uh, so that leads to this tachyonic potential. So th there would be string theory techniques available to calculate this, but it's not so easy. Okay, so now the idea then of, of our paper was to put all of these brains at the same time. And, and so as I just explained to you, so the, the three seven strings, they give these chiral fermions. Uh, the three five strings, they give the, the slave fermions at the defect and the supersymmetry breaking uh, D5, D7 strings, um, they, they give the, the bifundamental scalar, so which then condenses in this dual to this operator O. So, and, and then we already see that, so, so um, the D3, D7 strings, they're suppressed by one over NC because that's a probe brain. Similarly, uh, D3, D5 strings are suppressed by one over NC, but then the D7, D5, they're suppressed by one over NC squared, okay? Because they're not attached at all to these original D3 brains. And, um, okay, so then in the probe limit, um, they, they are suppressed by one or other power of n, and uh, so in principle, then really to, to have a valid string theory calculation, one really has to include all the back reaction um, correctly, and, and that's um, extremely complicated. So that's why we use this model just to, to write down um, the, the field theory side, but then we moved on to this bottom-up model, which I explained to you last time. Um, okay, and, and that was also the motivation for this more recent model in 2020, where um, we used the D1, D5 brain system, because then the electrons are uh, at this order in N, and okay, then there the, the boundary RG flow is given by some Wilson loop operator, and then everything is of the same order in N, and uh, so there's a lot better control of, from the string theory side there. Okay. But sticking with this model, uh, so everything I said so far was on the field theory side of the duality. And now if we go to the gravity side of the duality, um, so that these three brains give us this standard uh, ADS5 times S5 background. And the D7 and D5, they, they rub, they are probe brains, so they rub subspaces of this type. And so the D7 brains, uh, they give us this ADS3 space. 
And here we have a transimals field, uh, capital A, which is dual to the, the electron current. And um, so, and the D5 brains, there uh, they will be a gauge field on them, which are dual to this um, new charge density um, for these um, defect fermions. And, and there's a scalar um, with, with, so this tachyon, which is dual to, to our operator op. Okay, so that's what we have on the gravity side. And so in this model, in this bottom up model, which I wrote, we, we essentially just ignore, I mean, apart from writing down um, the PTZ black hole as the background metric in which everything happens, uh, we essentially consider the dynamics only for, for these two brains. Okay, so that's the big simplification that we make in our bottom up model. Okay, and so this was the action which I showed you last time. Again, I'm writing here the non abelian case just for being general, but all the calculations I showed you were just for the abelian, um, abelian part here. And uh, then obviously we also need temperature because we want to study this uh, phase transition in, in a condensed matter context where temperature is our scale. And uh, so that's why we use this BTZ black hole as a solution to the Einstein Hilbert part, which I didn't write here actually. <laughs> Okay, so so here this is maybe one picture which I didn't show yesterday, which um, is quite useful to have in mind. So so in principle we have an ADS3 space. Uh, so this is the interior of the ADS3, and the blue line is the the boundary, and so that's where the, the these strongly correlated electrons live. Okay, and then we have a defect which is ADS2, and uh, so that essentially uh, gives us um, the defect. Um, where, where this tachyon and, uh, and uh, this um, uh, young wheel gauge field uh, are defined. Okay, so because we, we look at the, the Poincaré part, um, then of course we only see one defect here, not, not two. Okay, so this is a kind of more global ADS picture and we really sit, um, we just have one of these defects. Okay, so this is, but nevertheless, this is an important picture to keep in mind because we really we have we have um, the transimus fields defined here, but there, since it's transimus, there is not a lot of dynamics, and um, so the dynamics really happens on this red line in this model. Okay, so most of the things happens on ADS two. However, these ADS two fields they are of course coupled to the electrons, which can also move in in this one more direction. Okay, so so um, if you are interested in generalizations, or if you would like to, so I, I talked also to condensed matter physicists and asked them, so what would you like? And so clearly, um, our model has this feature that here we just look at this transimals term. Let, let me show the transimals term. So, so the, this transimals term, which is due to the the electron current. So so psi are the, are the electrons. And because it's John Simons, uh, we really don't have any dynamics for these um, for these electrons. Um, okay, so they, they do not propagate in this model. And so what condensed matter physicists really would like to see that we can also calculate. I, mean, I showed you many spectral functions last time, but these were spectral functions for, um, for the defect fields. Okay, so just here, but what they would also like to see is spectral functions for the electrons, okay? And that would require putting um, a gauge field for, the, I mean, a proper gauge field, not just a transimals action, but putting another young wills action here for the electrons. And um, so then, then if we had that, um, we could, uh, uh, we could um, answer some more questions about the relation between this and studies of condensed matter physicists for um, strongly correlated electron systems with an impurity. Okay, so I mentioned that. So, what condensed matter physicists are interested in nowadays, if they study um, magnetic impurities in strongly correlated electron systems, so what they do, they take a lat Lattinger liquid and they couple it to a spin. And um, so that has a certain number of features, which I believe will be a bit different from what we are doing here. But to really compare, we would have to include the dynamics of this electron field into the model, which we haven't done yet. And, but if we did that, then we could actually 
um, compare much better to these uh, Latin or liquid approaches. And there should be some similarities, but still there should be some differences because uh, again, you know, we have a gauge spin and um, um, we have quite a lot of features which, which are still, uh, we have this matrix large n limit, so there would still be some differences to the uh, Latin to liquid with spin impurity. But okay, so this is something that nobody studied yet, but I think would be very interesting. So uh, the idea would be to replace this action by, um, by a, um, a true gauge field that propagates so with two derivatives and then um, calculate spectral functions for these electrons in this model. Okay, um, so because this bottom uh, top down model is a bit complicated, so we resorted to this bottom up model, which um, which um, has just some of these essential features. Okay, so and as I mentioned, okay, so still the spin group is gauged, which is different from the standard uh, condo model, and um, so um, we we pick this. Uh, uh, trans trans field to describe the electron current, so the charge you want, and um, then we we um, um, encode this impurity spin representation using this defect in Mills field. Okay, so and so there's a charge and um, char charge density and um, a chemical potential, but this is not for the electromagnetic symmetry. This is for this U uh, one symmetry that is associated to these chi's at the defect. Okay, and um, so this complex scalar, and this we also discussed this yesterday. There was this covariant derivative, and it's definitely covariant under both the gauge fields, the one plus one dimensional one, and the so, so the ADS three one and the ADS two one. Um, and uh, so so so, and that's actually what condenses. And as we also discussed yesterday, there will be a potential uh, with the mass of the right nona Friedman bound. Okay, and uh, so um, so the, this means that this double trace operator is really a, a marginal operator, and um, so um, um, that, that that will have some important features, especially for encoding this uh, double trace deformation. Okay, and then near the boundary, um, we have this expansion. Here, so where um, the dimensions of these fields determine the fact that there's a logarithm here and a constant here with the square root here at the front. Okay, and so as I explained yesterday, we have a UV flow from a UV to an IR fixed point. And so we deform the UV theory by this uh, double trace operator. And so the statement of this entire model is that uh, in the infrared, uh, we, where we have this infrared fixed point, the theory is characterized by this non-trivial condensate as described by the holographic superconductor. And well, I mean, that's what this model tells us about the Kondo effect that, okay, in this region where there's strong coupling and it's not really clear how to calculate anything. Um, so we just, the holography tells us that we should think of this theory as having a non-trivial condensate. Um, Okay, so um, let me, yesterday I also, there was a lot of discussion about uh, this field phi and uh, the double trace deformation and, and this renormalization and the running coupling. So maybe let me give you a little more detail than I gave yesterday. So um, as I said, uh, according to this paper, um, the double trace in deformation is implemented by us in, in, um, requiring this linear relation between the coefficients alpha and beta in the boundary expansion of phi. And then uh, this um, kappa will be the coupling of the double trace deformation. So really this is our condo coupling. And um, now under renormalization, uh, this entire classical solution has to be, um, has to be invariant. So, so, so if this is an UV cutoff, and this is some renormalization scale. Uh, phi over has, has to be the same, uh, whatever we put uh, for the two different cutoffs, okay? And uh, so now just because this is equal to that, 
we can solve for the running coupling. So the running coupling is here. Here there's the bare coupling. Okay, so this is written in terms of the bare coupling with the UV cutoff. This is the renormalized cut, uh, coupling at the renormalization scale. And then just solving this equation gives us this relation. Okay, so and and that leads to this dynamical scale generation that we saw all along where um, this coupling diverges. Okay. Okay, so this, I think many people asked about this yesterday. So so let me just stress this one more time that um, that's how, how this invariance of phi under renormalization works. Okay, so we want this asymptotic behavior to be the same uh, for for just the cutoff and the renormalization scale, and then we can just solve this equation and it gives this. So I hope this answers um, some of the questions that were asked yesterday. Okay, and then we can do exactly the same at finer temperature. So because if we are in this BTZ black hole background, uh, then we have uh, a horizon and the horizon is related to the temperature. And uh, then we can again say, okay, so this is our renormalized uh, expression for, for this um, scalar field and that's the bare one, okay. But now uh, instead of written in some of uh, in terms of some renormalization scale, we write it in terms of the temperature. And and then, but then the, the analysis is exactly analogous to what I showed you on the previous slide. And um, so then uh, we obtain uh, this expression for, for the running condo coupling. Okay, and then we see that this diverges at some particular temperature, which, which is the condo temperature. Okay, there were many questions about this yesterday. So I hope this made this more clear or there, are there questions about this? Hey, Joanna? Yeah. Uh, why the scalar solution of the scalar in the background of the black hole is the same as the pure ADS? Well, because this is just the boundary expansion. Okay, so so near the boundary is here. Yeah, I'm just equating the boundary expansions. So, so even if you have a black hole in the middle uh, at the boundary, you still have the same asymptotic expansion. Um, so can you introduce a, a black hole uh, by the uh, asymptotic expansion? I mean, no, okay. no, no, okay. So uh, no, I'm not doing like, like this here. I'm, I'm just saying I'm considering the boundary expansion of phi, okay? And um, so, and, and here, um, this is just written in terms of um, a bare coupling and a renormalized coupling, okay? I think this can be done um, because um, maybe this is the exact solution in the pure, I mean, the uh, ADS and uh, uh, without any banging action, right? Without any? Back reaction. Back reaction. Yeah. Well, but in the other case, we, we also don't so have now any. Now you consider a black hole. So this is the black hole and it looks like you do have the same uh, yeah, we have the same boundary expansion. We are just, the only thing is that we use um, this. Okay, so this is just a scale which is given to us from uh, if we put a black hole, which is the black hole horizon. Okay, so it just means that instead of writing this UV cutoff here or, or this renormalized scale there, I just, I use. Um, let me say one more time. Instead of using some arbitrary renormalized scale here, I just write the scale in terms of the temperature. But I, I'm totally free to do that because any, the only thing I'm considering here is, is the, the boundary expansion. So instead of writing mu, I, I just write t, but t is given in terms of that age. Okay. I, th I think it's it's totally equivalent because I'm just looking at the boundary expansion, but
But if I have a black hole, I have another scale and then I can use it to introduce the temperature. But um, I, I, yeah, I, I think it's just a rewriting of the same argument and, and the, what happens in the interior is not really uh, entering this equation or this argument. It's just an argument about the boundary expansion. Uh, so I think I'm okay to do that. <clears throat> well, we can look at the paper. I mean, this is there's quite some discussion in this paper of 2013. We have quite some discussion why we can do this. And, uh, I, I think it's just a matter of um, um, considering the boundary expansion, and rather than introducing some arbitrary renormalization scale, we introduce the uh, the temperature. So yeah, maybe we should look at, at this uh, 2013 paper again. It's written there. So what, what is your worry? You say I can only do this if I look the at the entire solution. And... Yeah, and I'm. I guess so. That is a. Uh, I mean, you need to. Uh, I guess you need to consider the IR boundary condition in order to determine what is the kappa t actually. So how the IR boundary condition is used? I'm not sure because this kappa t appears here in the UV expansion. Right, but that much, okay, should be determined uh, by the IR boundary condition, while you can fix beta as you want. Hmm. Okay, I, I, I honestly <laughs> have to look it up in the paper again. I, I think it's, I mean, I'm not, I mean, so normally what one does is to impose some regularity in the infrared. And uh, um, so if you insert uh, G equal, naively insert G equal GH, mm -hmm. then what you get is just a constant term. And uh, uh, it's not very clear whether, uh, right. If you insert a uh, G equal GH at the horizon, the phi value I'm not sure uh, at this moment uh, what was the your boundary condition at the IR. Well, I, I think the boundary condition in the IR is just to ask for regularity for phi. I mean, here then, we, of course, we ask for regularity at the horizon. Yeah. That's the boundary condition. Hmm. Okay, uh, we, we can look it up. I mean, um, okay, I, I can even look it up in during the break. <laughs> if, we, uh, if we do this for, um, um, it, it's, there's a, a, an explanation in, in our paper. Okay, maybe I can answer this in the second. Oh, <laughs> I will take another look at the paper. Okay, uh, so but then if you do that, um, you know, so again, as I said yesterday, this was just a plot. And, um, and uh, then here we see this condensation of the scalar, which determines this new new phase here. So how do you interpret if uh, how do you interpret this sign change of a cup of tea? Well, it's really, I mean, okay, how do I, well, it's, it's just essentially a re, the result of this equation. Um, and, uh, um, well, essentially, I mean, it's like you're saying, okay, so, so essentially this plot gives us the temperature, the, the, the condor temperature where, where we have this divergence here. 
But then the important thing is that um, in addition to, to um, kappa t, we also have the condensate appearing in this phase. Okay, so this means then, I mean, we, inter we just solve the equations of motion um, in, and find solutions which have a non-trivial condensate, which is exactly what is shown here. Okay. And then, of course, the, the physical properties of the system, if, if this condensate is non-zero, will be quite different. Okay, so this is now exactly like for a holographic superconductor. I mean, there, there are some um, very interesting features that were there before. Yeah, so I interpret this as a new solution, a phase transition, a new solution with, with this uh, non trivial condensate. So, so you see. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. This this phase transition is like all appear like in other cases, like when we go to near extremal solution, for example, the chemical potentials become negative. So it's just a sign of phase transition, right? So it's, it can appear in many other solutions too, like near horizontal extremal black hole when we have a gap or something like that, like a Fermi surface appear or something changes. Yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, it's um, what you have in mind, of course, is again, a phase transition for the entire gravity system. But here, the gravity is just in the background. Okay, so, so the only physics happens in these matter fields. And it's, it's really like in a holographic superconductor, where there's also uh, a condensate performing. Um, if you, if yeah. you do the analogy with the superconductivity, yeah. Uh, you need to specify which symmetry is broken. Yeah, yeah. Well, this the U one. This we also, yeah. The, the symmetry that's broken is this U one symmetry associated to. Uh, so the the U one symmetry that is broken is. Sorry, <laughs> uh, let's go back. I'm sorry. Yeah, the U one symmetry is the one associated with rotating these chi's. That's the one that's spontaneously oh, broken. I think that the uh, that. Uh, symmetry was uh, introduced uh, uh, because of the uh, you are making, uh, I guess, a uh, uh, virtual degree of freedom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But nevertheless, I mean, but I think that <laughs> the the formally in my model, this is there. So, broken symmetry must be, uh, I mean, the clear in terms of the original dynamical variable, right? So. I mean, the, if you introduce a virtual uh, symmetry and then you break it, and that, that is not something uh, you can be justified. Why not? I mean, this is exactly what the people studying um, the large end quantum model in, in, in condensed matter physics also do. So I don't know what they do, but uh, that is clearly something wrong. <laughs> I don't think there's something wrong. I mean, um, so you, you can really. Me, there is inside the S, right? So you decompose the S into chi dega chi, right? Yeah. So the so-called symmetry was, uh, I guess that the, uh, either that symmetry was not there in the original system. And the, because, of, I mean, the, uh, the symmetry you are using is just a virtual and the, the, it, it should not be the, considered as a real symmetry because it's there only for those degree of freedom, which is- Yeah, not it's a spurious symmetry. It's a spurious symmetry, but oh, it gets broken. You are, we are not, and this is not the global symmetry of the original um, system. So that cannot be broken. Wait, but it is clearly broken if I have this, con if this operator condensates- oh, I think that, the, the, that should not be, usually what people do in condensed matter, matter is, uh, they gauge it so that if you gauge it, then it's not a symmetry. W but why here, not? Uh, you, this thing is still invariant. I mean, we discussed a little bit yesterday. If this, you know, if we yeah, gauge right. it, then this, so that this symmetry is not there originally. So therefore, you need to gauge it. So that's how people introduce the uh, gauge field, uh, just to cancel out that degree of freedom. So. That is a gauge symmetry, and that they cannot be broken. Okay, I really don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> I, I I think I'm I'm you know um, so so um, okay. So the transition is really that 
um, you know, okay, so to be a little more precise, so we have this symmetry of flavors, which essentially also contains the um, um, the um, um, the electromagnetic symmetries, and and then essentially that's broken to the diagonal. So this is this extra symmetry that I just showed to you, and then it gets broken to the diagonal subgroup. Yeah, what I'm saying is that the, any symmetry which is introduced because you change the degree of freedom should be caged. Why? Because uh, uh, originally there was not any symmetry like that, and you, I mean, condensation is uh, due to the real global uh, symmetry breaking, right? Sh symmetry breaking of a global symmetry, and that global symmetry is not there in the original system. Well. I, okay, I, I don't quite understand, but also, okay, so if I write my model uh, in terms of this gravity dual, I mean, just from the way, I mean, this is what I explained this morning. Um, yeah, probably, so maybe. Uh... I'm just considering a model, okay, so where, sorry. Uh, uh, no, I went too far, sorry. Uh, sorry about this. Uh, so where was the this one? Okay. Uh, sorry. Oh, this one. I, I, let me just explain. Wait. So the way I just introduced is that I consider a model which has d three and d five. Okay. Yes. And that induces this zero plus one dimensional fermions. Okay. Right. And and so I just work with the theory where I have this given by these brains, and then. I interpret this in terms of the slave fermions that appear in the condo model, okay, which we can discuss if you like. But I, I think in, in the context of this model, this makes total sense what I'm doing. Okay. Because I mean, the, 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 uh, more field theoretical language, in more uh, field theoretical language, yeah. what you are doing is uh, you are uh, expressing spin S in terms of the bilinear of a chi. Right, and uh, yeah. by doing that, you are introducing, I think, the much redundant degree of freedom, and you need to gauge it. Okay, I'm not sure. Again, maybe we should look at this paper by uh, Kotlia Sengupta. Okay, so um, I mean, this is again, this is not something I invented. So maybe we can check if these other people. Uh, yeah, so I'm the... sure that they uh, they cage it. Okay. Uh, sorry, what's the reference? Use the technique. Whenever you express the spin model also in terms of the, um, I guess the fermion by linear, they usually introduce a cage field, so that this that is a so-called flux model and so on. So. What, but what I'm saying is that once you gauge it, that local gauge degree of freedom cannot be broken. Uh, probably, I think, uh, I'm not sure the, the exactly, but the, some model like an OM vector model. So people just consider without the gauging that is ON symmetry or this uh, I index, but that they just consider the global ON symmetry and consider the singular sector. So sometimes, and there people also consider this kind of like a symmetry broken and uh, they explain that some black hole context, uh, some kind of black hole evaporation, there is some context. So like uh, if you go to the Charles Simon method theory that should be, uh, some people gauge it, but uh, not in general, I think. It's I think it is you. Okay, you know, I'm, I'm just saying I'm not inventing anything new. This is already done in this paper, and maybe we should just look at it uh, in the break and see what these people do. Yeah, yeah let's show sure. it together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah let's okay, um, we can we can just look up what they do. They must have discussed this. Okay, and and so what we're doing here is just analogous to that. Okay. Um, Anyway, so so this is a phase transition like in a holographic superconductor, and of course, if we have a different phase, it means the physics properties are changed. And 
Okay, so uh, one thing that is obvious what it should do and uh, which we also checked is that the free energy of the condensed solution is smaller than the free energy of the, the uncondensed solution, so this is more stable. Okay, so this is anything something that people should always check if there's a phase transition, and we did, and it, it is called consistent with the interpretation. Um, and then um, also uh, solving the equations of motion, this is also what I explained yesterday. We see the screening because um, this, the electric flux is a sign of the um, um, is a sign of well, it counts the number of degrees of freedom, and um, so the impurity degrees of freedom decrease if we go to lower temperatures, which is a sign of the screening. Okay, now the phase shift. Okay, so uh, which uh, Martis asked about so. Um, so we can also see a little bit of this, uh, we can see this phase, though um, we don't have exact critical screening, so the phase shift is not by pi half, okay, so it's by some complicated number, um, and, um, but we can actually, it's true that, as Manus was saying, that this really is a kind of very type argument by looking at the, the Wilson loop for the three-dimensional gauge field. Okay, and again, looking at the solution of the equation of motion uh, below to see the scalar transverse electric flux from the two-dimensional young Mills field to the three-dimensional field. And so we can calculate the Wilson loop for the three-dimensional transhymens field. And um, so, because the three-dimensional field uh, couples to the, or is dual to the this current of the chiral fermions, this leads to a phase shift. Um, um, of this type for, for the chiral fermions. Uh, so, so this is the, the way of getting this phase shift. And uh, okay, so let me give a little more, more details. So, um, so this is um, the time component of the, of the electron current, um, which, which we, uh, is related to this term. So this is the young Mills field. And that's the equation of motion for the, the capital A, so the gauge field that couples to the electron current, uh, which uh, satisfies this equation of motion. And um, so uh, when, the, um, when we are in the broken phase, uh, the field phi is mm, uh, different from zero. And then this means that this current here is also different from zero. And uh, so if this is different from zero, um, this also affects the the gauge field that uh, couples to the electron current. Okay, so um, essentially what happens is that in the UV, um, this Wilson loop, or, or if, if you want also this very phase is, um, is equal to zero, but then uh, if in the infrared, uh, this gauge field, because it's sourced by this um, condensed uh, field phi, um, this, this will actually no longer be zero. And uh, as argued in this paper, this leads precisely to a phase for the, the field in the, in the dual current. And uh, so, so that's how we see this phase shift happening. Um, okay, so, um, and so just putting things, yeah, yeah. What, uh, let's, can, can you go back just one more slide? Go back, yes, here. So J is uh, providing some, what, some charges, right? Some charge, yeah. Right. So what is the interpretation of that charge? Okay, what so you want to do, is, uh, you want to uh, screen uh, a magnetic moment, right? Okay, so this is just the equations of motion. Yes. And in particular, I'm after the one in this yellow box. Okay, so, so this, is, this contains this capital A, which is the gauge field, which is dual to the electron current. And in the presence of the defect, so when there's this delta of X, uh, this is sourced precisely by, by, so this is the defect contribution to the current, okay? So this is, a, this is the young Mills field at the defect, um, uh, which is related to this um, spurious symmetry that we are discussing, and, and phi is, is this complex scalar. 
So, so what, uh, uh, what is the interpretation of a JT? Is it charge or some spin or what? Well, it's okay. So this is the current associated to, to the symmetry that we were discussing all that long. Okay, this mm -hmm. this pure is your one. Right. So what is that? Okay, so I mean, here I'm just writing the equation. Okay, so this is a, a gravity statement, which is just writing the equations of motion uh, yep. for 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 the fields in in, the, in this gravity action. Okay, so and so all I'm saying is that so we have coupled equations of motion where the 3D fields uh, are related to the 2D fields, and in, in this case, um, this current, which is again a current for this uh, U1 symmetry actually uh, sources uh, the equation of motion for, for the, the, the capital A, which is the gauge field coupling to the electron current, okay? And via this equation, we get a contribution to A, which then leads to this phase. Right, that is exactly the, 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 the thing which I wanted to clarify this. So in physics, yeah. physics wise, right? Yeah. What we want to do is, um, uh, Pin of the magnetic impurity is a screened by the itinerant electrons, right? So yes. what we have to uh, see is the kind of magnetic physics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this, okay. So I, I, let me just say this is this is what I explained before. Okay. Mm. So this this is the screening really because. Um, it, um, it, it counts the, de the degrees of freedom of, of the magnetic impurity, okay? And so these degrees, okay? So this argument that you are after now, this is precisely this argument, okay? Which I wrote in a nicer form yesterday. So, um, so the flux of this, um, so the little a field at the boundary um, counts, so, um, if in the unbroken phase, it's exactly equal to this little q, which is this charge density for the this extra field. Can you interpret um, how the density as a spin density? Yeah, but the spin is more, well, somehow, yeah, exactly. Well, the answer, I think the answer is yes, because we traded our spin for these chi fields. And since we traded for the sky fields, um, this actually so again this counts the representation of the of the spin field. Yes. So the yeah the answer is yes. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, that is what I wanted to understand. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Very good. So so yeah. Okay. So so this spurious charge density is really corresponds to the representation of the spin. So you you need a kind of um. So spin is a, something like can conserve the charge like an object. Yeah, exactly. So maybe because we write it in terms of this kind. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. So, uh -huh. All right. So okay. So JT is a kind of, kind of representing uh, spin density, not the charge density. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay. So if you you can say that this symmetry of the I as it represents the spin spin density. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So very good. Yeah. Thanks for for clarifying this because this now makes I think this makes clear what this equation means. So the, the spin density changes uh, mm -hmm. the the value of the the gauge field that couples to the electron current. Okay. And this then in turn implies that we see a, a phase shift um, for the electrons. Um, so. Uh, maybe you can remember what I was explaining two days ago when we talked about conformal symmetry. Um, so the so the screening um, means that there's no degrees of freedom at the at the impurity location anymore, and uh, this was exp expressed in the fact that the electron wave function has to be zero at this point, and and that led to this phase shift in in the wave function. And uh, here is now something very similar happens. Okay, so so the number of degrees of freedom is decreased, and this decreased uh, actually is reflected in the, in this phase shift for the electrons. The only thing is that this gives some complicated real number. It's not just pi half. Okay, 
Um, and so, so we have some for AX, right? There is one thing for AX, right? Sorry, I didn't understand. There was no source for AX field. Pick Before, AX. but yet, yeah, but exactly. But the source for AX is now precisely this defect term. That, that's what this equation says. So this is small f and the big f is the same f or different f? No, 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 no. This is just the thing. Huh? The big f is for the ADS3 transheimans gauge field big uh, A, which happens to the electron current. There was a small, small A also, right? Small f also before. Yeah, small f is the, the field strength tensor for the little a, which is the gauge field associated to this furious U1, okay? Big F is the gauge field for capital A, which couples to the electron current. And this is an ADS3 and this is an ADS2. Okay, let right. me show the action. I see, so, so AX source to you say. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's look at the action one more time. Okay, capital A leads to capital F, okay? And uh, this is an integral in ADS3 and couples to the electron current. Little f, you see here this uh, field strength tensor involves little a, and little a is a gauge field for precisely the symmetry uh, that we are talking all along. Okay. I, I guess the posts are sourced by this uh, uh, big derivative term. Yeah, exactly. And both little a and capital A appear in this uh, covariant mm -hmm. derivative. So phi is charged under both of them. All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you for asking because I think it's important to understand. So, and then, then this is all the equations of motion. And so the statement, I just want to make a simple statement that given that we have all these fields at the defect uh, of this type we just discussed, uh, this source is also the equation of motion. So here you see, this is the trans Simons equation of motion, okay, for, for the capital A. But capital A in our model doesn't propagate. Okay, that's what I said earlier. I mean, at the moment this capital A doesn't propagate and if we want, you know, to, uh, go on and, and do something interesting for condensed matter physics, it would be nice to make this F also dynamic, make it also propagate because then we can calculate spectral function for the capital A, so for the electrons, not just for the fields of the defect. Okay. So okay. Uh, uh, even in one dimension, mm -hmm. you have the small f squared term, right? So is there any reason why you sh didn't have the uh, f, the big f squared term, but just the Chen Simon term? Yeah, well, the reason is that this is the simplest term that we get from this DBI action for, okay, so it, it follows from the string theory construction that I showed at the beginning of the lecture today, okay? DBI action give you both, right? Yeah, I mean the DBI. Okay, I okay the DBI action. Uh, okay, let me go back. The DBI action. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean the you, you can just check that if you consider the DBI action for the seven brain um, on ADS three times is five. Uh, this will contain a trans Simons term, okay? And because we wanted to make our life simple and we ignored the dynamics of the um, um, the gauge field by just picking this trans Simons term, and but it's motivated by the fact that this trans Simons term is contained in this DBI action, okay? But now you are entirely right. I mean, if you know, it would be nice. I mean, that's what so condensed matter physicists are interested in the propagation of the electrons. So, and we didn't include it yet because we wanted to keep our model simple. Okay, but now if we want to make a further progress, we can also um, 
So that's replace this term by, by just um, F squared, okay? And okay. then we, we also, so, so then we also see the- A, pick A is giving you the phase shift? Yes. So, so, so big A couples to the electron current. Okay, so let me just show the, so this is the electron current, okay. Psi are the electrons and they live in one plus one dimensions. And then the, the uh, what is the phase shift? Uh, is, is it continuous one or is it pi or what? Well, that's what I was just saying. It's uh, so in the simple model, which I explained on Thursday, yes, okay, which involves these three electrons, the phase shift was just pi half, yes. And now we have this complicated model with strongly coupled electrons, right. and the phase shift will just be some, some real number. Oh, not okay. the pi or half pi, yeah, exactly. It's not pi over half. So this means we have either under or over screening, okay? So mm -hmm. last time I explained what under and over screening is. Under screening is if your cloud doesn't screen all the degrees of freedom and over screening is if there's some complicated behavior where there's more electrons coming than you have spin degrees of freedom. And, and so we have one of these situations is, uh, happening here. Um, yeah. So, I mean, th this is just due to the fact that our electrons are strongly coupled, okay. But again, I, I agree with you. This is something which could be interesting to study further to, to um, really understand what exactly is the number that we get here. And I mean, here we were just looking at the general mechanism, but you know, what number do we exactly get? What does it mean in terms of the condo physics? But I think to do this, this would be really interesting to have the this field A to be a propagating field, which so far we didn't have. Okay, so these are all things which would be interesting to do in the future also. Yes. Mm. All right. By the way, uh, in, 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 in your first lecture uh, about the that phase shift, the pi yeah. or minus one, yeah. uh, if that is arbitrary phase e to the IC theta, for example, yeah. Destroy the conformal invariance? No, I don't think necessarily. It's, uh, it, no, I, I don't think so. I mean, because it's just this boundary RG flow. And I think whatever the boundary condition is um, in one plus one dimensions, there's still conformal symmetry. Um, Okay, but, that, that would be interesting to check if um, Affleck and Ludwig actually considered other cases than just this pi half. I mean, that, that's the, clearly the simplest example, but um, you know, it, it would just mean that the, the representations of the conformal symmetry are fused in a different way, which is going to be more complicated, but um, I think it's still conformal. Okay. Um, I really wanted to talk a little bit about the entanglement entropy. So um, maybe here, okay, so um, here we give an argument for the resistivity um, in, in the infrared. And again, it's inspired by these arguments of Affleck and Ludwig. And um, Affleck and, and Ludwig, they, um, they infer the scaling of uh, the resistivity from the so-called leading irrelevant operator. So they, they go to this infrared fixed point and they, then they ask, what is the leading term that drives us out of this fixed point? So if we are in infrared, then obviously we want to leave the fixed point, we need an irrelevant operator. And um, so, um, so and in our case here now, we can just do the same and say the leading irrelevant operator is going to be the operator a dual to this field little a t. Okay, so this this j t which I discussed before. Yeah, um, j t. Yeah, and um, so so if we just borrow this argument, then we can from the standard ADS-CFT relation there will be a shift of this dimension of the operator in the infrared, which uh, comes from the horizon value of, of our um, 
scalar field. And then um, essentially, so this is just repeating the analysis of Affleck. So these are results from the Affleck uh, paper again. Um, so, and uh, we see that um, according to dimensional analysis for this operator, um, there will be a shift, which looks like this. T is the temperature and uh, delta plus is this change renormalized um, scaling dimension. And uh, okay, so so this means really that since this now will be a complicated number, okay, some complicated real number, okay. Uh, this means also here we get for the resistivity uh, some some complicated real number um, here. So it's not a logarithm, yeah. It's it's some t to the uh, gamma where gamma is some real number. But this again, this is something which is also. Uh, found in these not integer liquids. I mean, so, and again, this would be something to to um, be studied in um, in more detail. But again, this would require to make the electrons really dynamical, which they are not in our model so far. Okay. Okay. For for the last uh, ten minutes before the break, uh, I would really like to say a little bit about the entanglement entropy. Um, because so this is a nice result where we can really compare to field theory again, and our model can coincide really exactly coincides with the field theory result. Um, okay, I have some slides about I, I don't know is everybody familiar with entanglement entropy and the uh, Rio Takayanagi formula? Uh, if yes, I, I don't have to. I mean, do, does anybody want me to explain it, uh, or can I just assume that everybody knows it? Yeah, okay, good. I think we know. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> um, so, um, so you all know the Ryo Takayanagi formula, which says there's a minimal surface which gives us uh, the entanglement entropy. And now here we are in an ADS3 space with a defect. So if we're in ADS3 and look at the constant time slice, then the Rio Takayanagi surface is essentially a geodesic. It's just a line, okay, because we're in so low, low dimensions. Okay, so now you see the problem with our model. So, so if you want to see a change in the, uh, in the entanglement entropy, then obviously your space has to change because otherwise the, ge the geodesic has always the same length. And then, you know, so we have to go beyond the problem with because the, 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 the geodesic is a property of the, the background space. But so far we considered everything in the background of the space. And so the, the, the ADS3 never changed. Okay, the, AD, the BTC black hole. So if we want to see any effect of this impurity on the entanglement entropy, we have to include the back reaction of this ADS2 slice on the ADS3. Okay, so, and then I wrote a series of papers with my then students, Mario Flori and Max Neftzella. So Mario, he's um, now a postdoc in, in Madrid, actually. He was in Krakow for a long time. Um, now he's in Madrid. And so he had this very nice idea uh, of again having a kind of phenomenological model where we can see how um, this back reaction um, in, affects um, the entanglement entropy. Okay, so the statement is if we want to see how our impurity influences the entanglement entropy, we have to calculate the back reaction of the spin on the surrounding space. And uh, to do that, um, here we have a phenomenological model, uh, which involves the so-called Israel junction conditions. Okay, so what we really have is we have a three-dimensional space with this uh, one plus one dimensional subspace. And so we can, so and on the subspace we have extra degrees of freedom, and they back react on the geometry. Um, so, and these extra degrees of freedom, they lead to some energy momentum tensor, which is this energy momentum tensor. 
So now we just assume, okay, so this is the boundary, this is the radial direction in ADS. So essentially we just imagine that we cut our space uh, along this ADS2 brain. And then we glue the two halves together subject to this junction condition. Okay, and um, because on this junction condition, we have matter fields, um, this will lead to, um, right, these matter fields will determine uh, these, um, the, the curvature of the surrounding space in the neighborhood of this, this brain. So this is the extrinsic curvature on these boundaries. Okay, so we, we imagine cutting the space into two and we glue it together subject to this condition where um, the matter degrees of freedom on this defect enter. And so then we glue it together again and we get this hypersurface with our fields, phi A and so on. Uh, but now the space will be distorted. And um, so these matter fields, they lead to some tension. And in particular, if the, if the energy is positive, it will mean that the space will be bigger than before, okay, bigger. So if you put this in the kind of finite box, um, you know, the, the geodesics will change their lengths um, um, according to, to this gluing. Okay. Okay, let me see if I can make this more concrete. Joanna, what is X plus yeah. in the left? Um, okay, so this, this is a variable that we introduced just um, formally, okay, so we say, okay, let's cut the space into two, and the left boundary is x minus, and the right boundary is x plus, okay, and then uh, we glue the space together subject to this condition, okay, so, and then, um, yeah, then we identify X minus and X plus again, which, which will then give us our ADS2 brain uh, subject to this condition. So what, okay. what determines the tension of that brain? Uh, the matter fields on the brain. So little a, the complex phi, I mean, all the things that were in our action before. So these enter this energy momentum tensor. Okay. Okay, so then, now this is our Ryu Takayanagi surface, uh, you know, with the usual regularization and so on. And now we define a quantity which is called the impurity entropy. So normally in Ryu Takayanagi, you don't have this impurity, so you have a the entangling uh, area will just be now a length of line L, of length, uh, a line of length L. And then we have this geodesic here. And now uh, we the, the impurity entropy, so this is also something which was defined in field theory a long time before uh, we looked at this. Um, so now we will um, define this impurity entropy as um, the difference between the entanglement entropy in the condensed phase when this phi field is non-zero uh, minus the entanglement entropy in the normal phase, okay, when phi, this complex field phi vanishes. And so the subtraction also guarantees that our um, impurity entropy is, is um, uh, finite in the UV, okay. So we just calculate essentially the difference of the entanglement entropies with and without this impurity sitting there, or the interaction switched on, if you want. Okay. So, depending on the brain tension, which the brain tension is determined by this matter fields on the brain, so which are the ones that I discussed all the way along. So if this is the ADS boundary and this is the ADS radial direction, if the brain tension is larger than zero, then the two halves, the minus and the plus space, they appear to be kind of bigger than um, with, as if the brain tension is absent. 
So then um, this means that the Rio Taka Yanagi geodesic will be longer. On the other hand, if the brain tension is negative, uh, we lose uh, some bit of the space in using this Israeli junction condition. And then um, um, this means the Rio Taka Yanagi geodesic will be shorter. Okay, so this is a, this, so we use the, the Israel junction condition to um, implement the back reaction of the defect on the surrounding geometry. And the, the, this F effect of how this geometry changes will be measured by looking at the length of the geodesic, which is then the Rio Yanagi surface. Okay. And okay, so, so now this is again a numerical calculation of precisely this. So here we have this X plus. Okay, so um, X plus is essentially this coordinate here, um, as Sanjin just asked. So, so this is this line here. And so, and now we see that when the scalar condenses, uh, actually the tension reduces and this line moves in this direction, making the side uh, kind of smaller again. And, and that's what we see here. Okay, so in the normal phase, uh, when, when the, the fire field is zero, then we have this red line. Okay, so this is at TC. Again, so this is the boundary of ADS, this is the radial coordinate. And then we see when the scalar condenses, this X plus line, this line moves in this direction. By the way, can you see my mouse actually? Yeah. Okay. So, and um, so, so again, so, so switching on phi means that the tension decreases and then uh, the boundary of the space moves in this direction. So when I glue the two spaces, the geodesic will be shorter. So the upshot of this picture is this sentence, okay? So the larger the condensate of phi, which we agree was a uh, condo phase, okay? The shorter the geodesic, and if the geodesic is shorter, it also means the entanglement entropy becomes smaller. Okay. Um, so here, this is just a, uh, a similar plot. So, so this is uh, L is the size of the entangling region. And, and now this is this um, just some renormalized way of writing the, the uh, entanglement uh, entropy. And again, you, you can see this effect of the screening. Okay, so the number of degrees, also the entanglement entropy decreases, which again also means that the number of degrees of freedom decreases. Um, when when the size of this entangling region is increased. Um, okay, uh, I think I will come back to this uh, after the break, but let me just give you an outline. So um, the nice thing about this geometric construction is that we can reproduce a field theory result for a large N that was given in these papers uh, already some time ago. <laughs> So, and they calculated this impurity entropy for an entangling region of length L uh, in conformal field series. And um, so this is the so-called condo correlation length. Okay, so, which is a measure of how large this, the screening actually is. And uh, subject to identifying a, a suitable length scale in our gravity model, we get exactly the same equation by using this technique, which I just showed to you. Okay, but maybe I should show this to you after the break. Okay, so the, the, the statement will be, I, I can, with this geometrical story that I'm just telling you, we can re reproduce uh, this equation. Excuse me, can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah, sure. So all of these are before the generalized entropy and this island formulation, island calculation, I think. Yeah, 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 of course. Several yeah. days ago, Takayanagi put another paper about this island in uh, BCS, BCFD. So, like, yeah, I, he should have cited us someone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think. Did he do that? Yes. <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, there's, there's a lot of interest in this realm with, with this island story. And 
I mean, okay, I mean, we had a totally different motivation, but I think many of the results are already in, in those papers, which we had uh, a few years back. Um, there was also recently a paper by uh, Emil Martinik, maybe in January sometime uh, about this, and but he, he actually referred to this paper, which I mentioned here, um, this one. Okay, so. Um, so they like, like they, there's a correspondence between like this island behavior and this screening behavior that you're talking about. Yes, I mean, okay, you're absolutely right. And I think that would be very interesting to do to really uh, work out um, how this uh, Israel junction condition idea that we have here uh, can be used in, in this island context. And, and I think there's a, a lot to be learned there. And that would be a very interesting project to, to use all these techniques that we developed, um, especially this Israel junction condition. Uh, to, to learn something about this island story. So, so for example, this um, the degrees of freedom is reducing or screened. Is, yeah. Is it like, can I think about it? Like it's just go to the island. So like the, the island, but there's a saddle point, like shift. There's two saddle and one of them is dominant at each phase. And when you have it, like the degrees of freedom as a screen is like, they are moving to the island. The island so, becomes dominant. Yeah, this, this sounds super yes. exciting. I think it's I, very, I, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, I, I very <laughs> connected. Yeah, yeah, no, we, we should definitely look at this, <laughs> you know, if you're interested. I mean, uh, I think that would be super interesting to, to make use uh, the idea of this construction to, to, to do exactly what you just said. Um, yeah, I, I think it's very much related. Yeah, and, yeah. and uh, I mean, um, this, this would be straightforward to look at because all these techniques are there. Very good. Yeah, no, I definitely, I mean, uh, <laughs> I can say <send> to Mario <laughs> to you. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, very good idea. Excellent. Um, okay, I, I will explain this thank in you more so detail. Much. After the break. Yeah, thank you so much for the exciting talk. Yeah, yeah, thanks. We will come okay. back. Yeah, I'll see you. you in one hour then. Yeah, see you later. Thank you. Yeah.